Health protection is a vital strand of public health, which brings together a wide range of specialists and partners who work together to lessen the impact of infectious diseases and environmental hazards. Cheshire Western Chester has a history of leading efforts to protect the public's health. Dr John Haygarth was a physician who spent 30 years at Chester Infirmary from 1766 and went on to become famous for helping new ways of reducing the spread of smallpox. This included promoting inoculation, isolating infected people and educating the public. All of these health protection measures have been vital throughout the pandemic. So this year's report celebrates a whole range of health protection work that we do here in Cheshire Western Chester. Having well-established partnerships provides an excellent foundation to deliver an effective and high-quality response to the pandemic. Our residents, businesses, education and community sector organisations all played a vital role alongside health, social care and other professionals. Our testing centres have been pivotal in detecting COVID and helping us contain outbreaks. Throughout 2021, we've started with asymptomatic testing and that offer a fixed sites. We've introduced two mobile testing units which were able to deliver targeted testing throughout the borough, whether that be to a rural community or to some of our less accessible residents. Not only can people come to site and have a test, they can come and collect tests from us to take home for home testing. The University of Chester were instrumental in providing support to students, some of whom were away from home for the very first time. The types of things we've been doing since COVID-19 started was establishing very quickly a test and trace. Students are also encouraged to report whether they were symptomatic or had tested positive for COVID-19. And then our team not only would contact Trace, but make sure they were supported and the welfare was supported, that they knew what to do, ways of tackling self-isolation. We work very closely with Public Health and Cheshire West and Chester colleagues, where we would report any outbreaks that we were aware of, any up-to-date guidance would be shared with us. So kind of things that led from that were establishing a vaccination centre. We've had fantastic comms sent from the council um, that we've been able to share. And we just made sure we were in a kind of alignment with what we were saying, um, and it worked really well. At the end of 2020, I was studying biology, and one of my lecturers sent an email out saying, you know, this might, you might be of interest to you because it might be a really good work experience. Um, and I also really wanted to play my part in helping the community and helping the, the, the students and staff at the University of Chester feel safe on campus. Originally I was a processing operative. I actually carried out and processed the lateral flow tests. And currently I'm a registration assistant. I help everybody come in and make sure that they're registered onto the booking system so that they get their test results. It's been really nice to know that I've done my part in helping the community. I have been working a lot with vaccination and testing teams around COVID-19 and try and map out engagement plans to make sure that concise, culturally sensitive information is shared and also work with communities to try and reduce any vaccination hesitancy that they may be experiencing. We find that with the, the BAME community is very difficult to kind of to understand the, the system and how to report and how to, uh, to navigate the system. We kind of ask members of the, the BAME communities to come from different backgrounds to come and give the message to their community. And we give them the masks, we give them sanitizer, and we give them a lot of flow test kit and we teach them how to use it. We are there trying to teach them how to use it and how to uh, deal with it. During this difficult time, financial support was available to assist organisations and businesses, which all helped to build community spirit. COVID-19 had a devastating impact on the business. We were closed for long periods of time. Our customers were hesitant in terms of coming into the high street when we were able to reopen. 
We had lots of support from central government and local authority in terms of grants to help us really to continue to trade and to continue to pay rent for property. Without that support, we wouldn't have been able to survive the COVID-19 period. Outside of the shop, we've got a parklet which was installed by the local authority. It's a seating area, it's surrounded by plants and trees. Uh, it's just, just a nice area for people to come and sit, really. It certainly helped, yeah, we've seen more people come and use our business, use adjacent businesses, so yeah, it's been great. I knew that a lot of members early on in lockdown, a lot of our members come to us because it, it's their one kind of moment of positivity in the week. And singing is such a good way to kind of keep the spirits high. There have been plenty of studies out there that prove that it lowers anxiety levels, uh, decreases stress, etc., etc. So I was really keen to keep people singing. So uh, part of what I did with, with some of the grant money that I received was that I used that to kind of pay my wages while I offered out free services. So we did uh, a weekly online sing that was free for anyone to join in online and, and come along and try and do some songs. And we did a virtual choir video, which was free to take part. People filmed their parts at home, sent me their video. I recorded kind of lessons for them to go through at home so that they could learn the song, learn their parts, taught them how to set up cameras, got that all together, and then I edited it into a piece that then kind of went a little bit viral locally. It got shared around on Facebook. And then when we were allowed to start rehearsing the choir again, we were allowed to do it outdoors for a time. So we ended up hiring the local football stadium <laughs> so that I could have them outdoors, spaced apart, but we had a little bit of cover from the elements. That was a bit of fun as well. I know that people have come to me, they've told me how much they appreciated being encouraged to carry on singing at a time when, you know, feelings were low, everyone was struggling. Uh, it was just something that kept people's spirits up a little bit. I'm really pleased that people were able to kind of keep doing the thing that they loved, even when things were a little bit dark. Pandemic caused challenges in other areas of health, such as immunisation and screening programmes. We all worked together to develop a range of solutions to help improve uptake and reduce health inequalities. Our community connectors, they kind of help people to book the appointment for the vaccination and help them how to navigate the system. They will go and, and knock doors on people, try to encourage them to take the vaccination and to approach the community with their own language. I think that historically, from community groups experiences, they have been left out of policies and not necessarily been able to access the support that they've needed. So that's what's led to possible not understanding about what's available to them. Part of my work has been to engage with vaccination testing teams in the council to make sure that information is shared in the languages that are spoken and sharing factual information about vaccinations and testing and also highlighting that it's not about us judging them on the decisions that they make, it's about sharing information so they can make informed decisions. I think it's been a lot of conversations, so since I am made aware of and connected with community groups, I make it a priority to have conversations about COVID-19 to ensure that they have the information that's needed and if they don't then try and work with other teams within the council to bring to them the information as well as add information on our Live Well website in the Equality for My Health content. Vaccination against a range of infectious diseases helps protect our health. We worked with the Royal Society of Public Health to produce a toolkit that will help improve the uptake of vaccinations. In recent years, we've seen a drop in childhood vaccination rates, and that's been exacerbated by COVID-19. And that's leading to outbreaks of measles and mumps. And there's a disparity in uptake and coverage rates between different uh, areas and different demographic groups. So we wanted to develop a resource which took the momentum and interest generated by the COVID-19 vaccine rollout and apply that to routine immunisations more generally. We did this by developing a toolkit to bring together different partners across local systems. The involvement of Cheshire West and Chester's public health team was absolutely key to this project. They gave us a really helpful insight into how they gain assurance of local immunisation services and some of the barriers they face. 
They supported us in holding a stakeholder workshop which brought together loads of different organisations from the CCG to Healthwatch, GP practices and uh, local substance misuse services. And they presented to the group and then we facilitated discussions about inequalities in uptake in the area and ways of addressing them. So as well as shaping the toolkit itself, we drew up a local action plan with them which can be taken forward to routine immunisations in Cheshire West and Chester. Healthwatch were invited to take part in the toolkit. Um, we went to a, an event in September where we passed on our experiences of the work that we've done with the boating community. People at that event felt that this was really useful and asked if it could form part of the toolkit. We went to 49 different marinas across Cheshire and we were able to speak to a large number of the, the boating community and make them aware of where their nearest Covid vaccination centres were and gave them access to the GP access card so that they could understand how they could get medical support. Screening for things like cancer will help us spot disease early so it can be treated. We hear from the Cancer Alliance about the amazing work done locally to help increase the number of people going for screening. One of the best things we can do is participate in cancer screening programmes. They offer screening to apparently healthy people who are at higher risk of cancer. Around 31% of our breast and cervical cancers are, are picked up through screening. It's really important because it's a way of picking up cancer earlier and early cancer is much more treatable. One of the things the Cancer Alliance has developed with Cheshire CCG is the Action on Cancer Toolkit. It's a resource of tried and tested materials and resources to help you to talk to your public and engage about cancer. We want people to understand how lifestyle impacts choices, how screening and how recognising early signs and symptoms of cancer makes such a difference to them. We also work in partnership to prevent and reduce the transmission of communicable diseases. The Westminster Drug Project, who support people affected by drug and alcohol issues, have been working to help eliminate Hepatitis C. Hep C is a virus that affects the liver. Often service users or individuals won't have symptoms. Um, some people may experience symptoms like tiredness, feeling obviously unwell, stomach cramps, aches and pains. If not treated, it can be quite serious because obviously the liver could shut down individuals could obviously die because of it, of it. Um, so it can be obviously quite serious if not treated. In July of 2021 we had a Hep C drive day in Cheshire West and Chester. The partners that were involved with that was ourselves WDP, um, Countess of Chester Hospital, the liver specialist nurse in the hospital and also the ODNs from Liverpool. Um, so part of that drive day we conducted um, across two of our sites, Ellesmere Port and the Chester Hub and various locations in the community. What that actually involved was individuals having a test for Hep C. And the ODNs came down with their um, CEPID machine which gives an instant result if somebody is Hep C positive and they were able to start the treatment there and then. And we tested 157 individuals and out of those 157 individuals, 15 actually started treatment. Our sexual health services remain an important part of health protection and we work to ensure that people of all ages and backgrounds feel comfortable accessing the services. The work that we do is outreach work. We're commissioned through the Integrated Sexual Health Contract to provide outreach to the vulnerable groups who might find it difficult to come into a clinic and engage with them. And vulnerable groups in Cheshire include younger people, which is why I'm here in college today, but it might also include people who are older, sex workers, we've worked with refugees, we go out and see the homeless population to provide them with testing and condoms, and really anybody who just might find it difficult to engage. Our job is to kind of break down that stigma, to get people feeling more comfortable, more confident with taking control of their sexual health, so that they can come to me, get condoms, ask questions, test for STIs, but also then it might help them to feel more confident about going into a clinic and having a conversation there. 
I think in Cheshire West over the last couple of years, as with everybody, we've been up against the difficulty of trying to do outreach when you couldn't actually go out and reach people. So we've been able to be very responsive and dynamic about the way we've worked. We've shifted a lot of things online so that, for instance, our students, if they couldn't find us in college, can order their condoms online and could access testing and health information that way. And because of the way we address sex in this country, we're often quite embarrassed and stigmatised and and cringy about it and that stops people from being able to access help because if you feel embarrassed you're not really going to walk into a clinic and say can I test for chlamydia please you're going to sit at home on Dr Google worrying yourself that you've got some incurable disease in fact what we can do is help to break down that stigma we approach everything with humor we're very open we're very honest everything's inclusive as well so we make sure that everybody on the LGBT plus spectrum feels welcome with what we do our little rainbow flags uh, for instance on my desk so that everybody can see it's a safe space and come and have a chat to me. The pandemic has been difficult and demanding for everyone, both professionally and personally. The Infection Prevention and Control Service provided by Cheshire and World Partnership NHS Foundation Trust has been instrumental in helping to manage outbreaks in care homes, nurseries and supported living settings. A big thank you to all of our health and social care workers for your commitment and skillful way in which you have delivered services in a rapidly changing environment. The infection control team it isn't just about firefighting and managing infections, it's about a lot of preventative work as well. For example, we do a lot of training to our colleagues in GP practices, in care homes and supported living in basic infection control procedures to support them in their work and to prevent harm to the population and the people that they look after. One of our key campaigns at the moment is antibiotic awareness. So one of our key pieces of work is to educate the population and educate the providers that we work with on their appropriate usage and management. We educate any members of the public that we come into contact with. We try and use the message that every contact counts and to get that information over to people. Infection prevention and control is really important and not just during COVID times. It's always been the cornerstone to all good practice within healthcare. However, COVID has really highlighted the need for it to become a, a whole system approach for the whole population to protect people from harm so that they can go about their lives safely, happily and live long, healthy lives. We work with emergency services and the NHS to prepare for adverse events and incidents. This helps us to predict and minimise the effects of an incident to help reduce injuries, protect the community and maintain business continuity. This work has included our COVID response and other incidents such as fire, air pollution and natural disasters. During the last year, we've experienced a number of storms which have caused flooding affecting the areas across West Cheshire. Last year, we uh, flooded down in our premises in the town centre and we flooded twice in 18 months, which destroyed, I guess, the business. Everything kind of got wiped out. We had to throw everything away. And for me, we had to move because we're scared of it happening again. We took on like a, a smaller unit which the council halved for us to take on after we got flooded. We've been quite lucky with that. We also work to protect the public from consequences of environmental hazards such as water and air pollution, extreme weather or chemical exposures which can affect human health by contributing to chronic diseases such as cancer or causing illnesses. In 2019 Cheshire West and Chester Council voted unanimously to declare a climate emergency and focus on climate change as a priority. We do lots of work to encourage people to reduce their carbon footprint, actively travel and access green spaces, which has a positive impact on mental health and well-being. I would encourage you all to play your part in any way you can. You can see just behind me the Ellesmere Port industrial area which contributes to this borough having some of the highest carbon footprints anywhere in the country. And that's one of the reasons why we've taken the climate agenda so seriously. It's something where every individual, every team across the council has a part to play. Thank you for the work you're doing to make a difference to this really important global challenge. What is a wellbeing walk? Well, it's all about getting out in nature, in the fresh air, 
doing some small walks and meeting other people. And currently across the borough, we've got 60 volunteers that are helping leading 13 wellbeing walks every week. What we want now is more people to get out and about and meet new people and let's all get walking. These dementia walks are for sufferers of dementia but also people who have lost um, partners or family members or people who know people that have got dementia. So it's open to anyone really. Cheshire West and Chester Council fund this project. People should get involved in these activities just so they can meet other people. We all have a laugh as well going round and they hopefully learn something on the way. Forest School is a concept that came over from Scandinavia some years ago and it's about encouraging children to do outdoor learning, whether it be den building, fire lighting, games, a whole host of activities. It gives them the concept of sharing, so it's quite simple skills for children of this age, but it will set them up for life, these Forest School sessions. I hope that we can keep building on the amazing kindness that our communities have shown each other and our other public health screen and immunisation programmes can be as big as a success as the COVID vaccine uptake that we've seen locally. My hope for 2022 is that we're able to continue to uh, open things up and we don't go back into any kind of lockdown. Confidence will be, you know, rebuilt. Uh, with customers that they'll come out into the high street. I think I just hope that everybody continues to follow the government guidelines and do what they can to keep everyone around them as safe as possible. People continue to have hope that things can be different and things can be better. People can continue living their lives and that, that we go from strength to strength and the rebuilding that has begun continues. I hope that we learn from these last two years um, and bring all those good innovations forward uh, but also um, probably value all the things that we missed or what the pandemic took away from from us. The pandemic is nearly over but we still have a part to play to protect the public's health. We continue our good infection prevention and control practices, we can help reduce our own carbon footprint and we can take up screening and immunisation opportunities to help improve our own health. It's absolutely vital that we maintain community spirit and continue to work together to protect and improve the health and well-being of our borough.